One difference is that engineers are more hands-on while physicists are more theoretical. They will solve problems using physics and math, and then the engineers will take the solutions to those problems and create the project. Another difference is that engineers have more job opportunities in the market. In 2008, there was 1.6 million jobs versus 1.6 10,000. However, physicists do tend to make a little bit more. In the beginning of the course, there were two main professions that I was planning on taking on, aerospace engineering or environmental engineering. I've since realized that aerospace is not gonna be the profession for me. I was only interested in it because of astronomy and astrophysics, but that's gonna be more beneficial just learning about, but not really making a career out of it. So my other current options are agricultural engineering and environmental engineering. Both of these are similar because they deal with nature and I'm going to be doing further research into both of them since I don't have a lot of knowledge on them right now. I do know that environmental engineering is mainly concerned with waste disposal, public health, pollution, solar panels, recycling, and other things of the sort. Meanwhile, agricultural engineering is more concerned with power supplies, machine efficiencies, harvesting, and pollution as well. I would also like to add a possible third career that I did just find out about, which is forest engineering, because they're concerned with tree maintenance and protecting the ecosystem and finding a way to get these human projects that we're creating into the world in a sustainable and safe way. I will be doing more research on this because I'm not really sure how much it compares to forestry. And I'm also gonna be looking at all these based on prices, location, and how much math is involved because I prefer a lot of calculus and a lot of linear algebra. And But forestry does seem really interesting because that seems like out of the all three, it seems the one that's most in nature. And I really do wanna be in nature on a daily basis in the profession I choose. Occam's razor, which states that the simplest solution is most often the correct one, is still being used today. My primary purpose for it was when studying philosophy because of all the different positions and premises involved. While one position could technically be correct due to all the steps and premises that it takes to get there, it just seems too unlikely to be correct in comparison to its simpler counterparts. And since philosophy is still being studied today with so many unanswered questions, Occam's razor is still serving its purpose. CAD is so important because it helps us use online software to create our project without wasting money on the resources just yet. We're able to pull all the parts together and use the software to make sure that everything is in its correct position and works nicely with one another. We make sure that all the pieces connect, that none of them run into each other, they're able to move, help us figure out our dimensions and just get a solid visual for the idea. So this is most useful, useful for uh, pre-creating something and then for pitching. The first step is researching, seeing what's already out there. I would suggest looking at phone cases that are able to save phones falling from 10 feet and figure out how they're built. You know, what materials did they use? How did they frame the structure? Are there certain ideas that different companies have that overlap? Is there something that you've thought of that no other company has thought of before that you think would work? And then the next one is confer with others. Talk with engineering peers, friends, stores, even kids, and see if they have a thought that you haven't thought of before. And then the third one is take a walkabout. Go in your workshop and see if there are any materials that would be useful that you already have on hand. And if not, walk around a store and see what types of materials they have in stock. The next step is design. You want to specify what you are trying to make. Do you plan on making a phone case or are you going to build something that can save other objects falling from 10 feet? And then once you decide this, you're gonna to wanna to make a bunch of rough sketches. You are gonna to wanna to use different angles and dimensions to make sure that all the parts fit together. You can either draw this and or use CAD. Additionally, you're gonna to wanna to see if your system will benefit with subsystems and then create sketches on those. And this is more like in detail, figuring out where the screw is gonna to go to make sure that nothing runs into each other, that they all fit and that your system has maximum mobility. Because breaking your project down into smaller parts makes everything more manageable. Then you're going 
to want to create some prototypes. I wouldn't suggest doing a scale model because your project itself is already so small and going smaller isn't really gonna benefit it as much. The next step is testing. You're gonna wanna test each subsystem first before you secure everything together. Because if you put everything together and then tested it, it's gonna be hard to tell where the error came from and it's gonna be hard to go in and fix your mistakes because if you epoxied things or melted or welded things together, you're not gonna be able to go in and fix it. For example, you wanna make sure that the base frame fits around your phone before you add all the protective gear around it. The last step is evaluating. As you test each subsystem, correct them if they fail and keep doing so until it produces the idea that you had in mind. And don't be afraid to fail and instead fail forward.